The Central Club. What's going on, people? It's Cullen at the Central Club podcast. I'm here with my main man. Oh, Derek Diablo, tell boy D. Man, the casuals, you already know. I'm here with Cullen, and we're going to see some of the beauty, some of the sights that Carter has offered here. Carter Castle, Jack. <laughs> and I'm going to see what, what happens in there, man. I don't know if they got some medieval firms or something might come at us with long swords, but we're going to have to be ready. I'm, I, maybe I'll use our bicycles to implement, implement, uh, implement a shield, you understand? Let's go and have a look. This this castle has been here since the Roman times. As you can see, we've got the Roman the Roman foundation still here. Obviously, we can't get in the castle. The castle's shut today. Amazing. Oh, maybe we can um, get in. Why don't we ask him? Hey, are you still open? Oh, you can't let my fellow American in. No, I'm sorry. I Can you just have a little peep at the fort? No, uh, I don't think so. Oh, it's a shame, man. Hey, I I understand. They may have a priceless artifact in there and they're concerned about me getting my hands on it. That could be the reason. I don't blame you. <laughs> well, we take it back to the firm. That's right. It, it would have to depend on what it is because I'm on the quest of Arthurian legend. And I know that this has to do with the Romans, brother, but I'm getting warm. And this, I've seen some castles now. I've seen castles in Puerto Rico, Moro castles. Uh, I've, been there, I've been there a few different castles so far, but uh, this one's unique in the way it's I, it's, it looks, it's clearly designed for battle. <laughs> Around what year was this completed? Well, the, the restoration. The restoration was uh, literally 100, 100 years ago, 150 years 100 ago. Years. Excuse me if I'm wrong with that one, but... So no castles in Miami? Well, brother, we used to have what you call Castle Park, which was a bit of a castle that you, you, know, you run go-karts and stuff. But uh, since Castle Park, we, we don't really have any. But what I'm learning here, I intend to take back and I'll build me one in Miami area soon enough, brother. And when I build my castle, I'll bring you over. You yes, tell me brother. what you think. Yeah, well, you've already tried infiltrating the casual scene. You're doing a good job of that. Let's try and bring back some castles, yeah? Yeah! <laughs> hey, brother, hey, a, a, a man's home is his castle. Yeah. Or a man's castle could be his home. We got the castle, uh, Magic Kingdom castle in Orlando. I don't know if you count that. What, oh, Disneyland? Disney. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, there, Diablo, tell boy D. Ooh, Diablo TV, like, subscribe, do things supposed to do, daddy. And as you know, I was in England, but now I'm in Wales, in Cardiff. And I like the place so much, the people are so good. I'm thinking about getting me a summer home. So I told him to show me some real estate. This is the place I'm looking for, brother. Cardiff Castle. I'm looking to make this my summer home. And hopefully I'll have the people of Cardiff on my side. We're going to have to see. Hey, for example, how much Americans you think you know what, the, you know what Swansea is? <laughs> uh, why do I know it? Because of football. How many Americans kn know what Penge is? Let alone have they been there or want to go there? How do I know it? Uh, Cor Clerks Gary. Yeah. Hey, hey, Rod, you know, in Football Factory. So, <laughs> it, it's, it begins with the hooliganism, but it leads to me then knowing more about the football and then learning more about the culture, learning more about the history. Yeah. You've obviously been heard of Cardiff City Soul Crew. What's it feel like knowing you're in Cardiff City now? It's not like being in London or somewhere else. You, you can easily get away. You're putting yourself in a situation and you're going to a different country. But the uh, thing about it is, I've always had respect for Soul Crew and the interactions I had with their lads. Uh, I, I felt that you know if they said that I'd be welcome, then I'd be welcome. So hey, you already know when you're alone with a, with a big group and a, and a, and a hard group, you know, you you put yourself in a certain situation. I use God as my as my instinct and so forth. And uh, I've heard nothing but good things. Obviously, people, my friends get turned over in a football fight. They don't. They're not going to give respect for that. Let's say they're not going to praise this group. But with that being said, everybody says the people. Everybody I talked to from Plymouth said that you're going to love the people there and that they're good people and you're going to enjoy yourself. Yeah, so I feel good to be here. I've seen on your videos, you know, and you're an actor in a sense. You know, you've done acting I've done, before. I've done movies, yeah. You're talking about accents. I heard you talk about <laughs> doing a Welsh accent. Have you mastered that yet? No. Can you give us it? No, 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 no. I'm working on it. I'm, now, next time I come back for do, to do part two on your podcast on the Central Club, well, by that time, I hope to have something to present to you. So what kind of accents have you hacked from 
football well, hooligan food. Well, the, I begun with the Cockney, right? And uh, to me, how they tell you, you cunt, I'll kick your fucking head in. I'll open you up like a fucking ladder, you fucking twat. So, that's a, that's a bit of the Cockney. You're with Millwall, you're in Cardiff, the firm, down the road. Can you give us a little impersonation of <laughs> you as a Millwall lad? If I was a Millwall lad, and we're here now. First thing I would want to do is get off this main area. First thing I would want to do is gather our forces somewhere around the corner and then send some scouts out and have to see where the, where the, where the, where the soul crew would be at. We've got a new flannel store opening here. Mm -hmm. This is Queen Street. This is like one of the high streets of Cardiff. They've got Queen Street and St. Mary Street. Um, I'll probably get in trouble saying this. This is more like the lower class side. You see a lot of trouble on this one, on this street, especially down this end been neglected over the last couple of years it used to be down the other end so this is Queen Street back onto the hooligan talk yeah there's loads of firms you call out on your videos yeah apart from the Steve Dolan is there any other firms you really added in for I've seen a video with a Wolverhampton Mike Hunt but did you realize that Mike Hunt means Mike Hunt what do you think did you know at the time or I knew that what that meant when I was in second grade, brother. <laughs> That's the whole thing that makes people laugh. And then the people that get wound up by it, they take it serious, the joke is on them. And that's what makes it funny to me and the other lads who get it. It's yeah. like, hey, when you bang a woman, if you don't bang her the right way, do you bang her, <laughs> you bang her the right way the first time you get what you get, brother? That's you, true, that's you know true. What I mean? It ain't about practice, there ain't no second chance. Just like in a fight, you slip, you regain your footing. You make yeah. a mistake, yeah. you, you keep it moving, you feel me? Same with music, same with music. You, you don't make a mistake, and play the wrong note and, re and go back and repeat it. No. We're coming to Cardiff it. Prison, no. Hey man, I've not done nothing wrong yet, brother. This is uh, Kesto's favorite place. <laughs> I've been here a few times. This is my local jail, so this is where we go. Um, when you first get arrested, you initially get arrested. This is where you go to this prison here. Like. So would you say that this prison here is similar at all to any American jails? <laughs> Maybe similar to Alcatraz, brother. If you, look, if you look at that, that's old school there. They look like the, the castle we just came out. Now, I want to ask you a question, brother. Yeah? Well, we do, when we locked up and stuff, we improvise on workouts. You know what I mean? And yeah, so yeah. people call this triceps. But, but black lads, and I speak more in that fashion, and that's what I'm around, they call that back arms. So let's say that's a sink. We, yeah. do, we do back arm on the sink, right? We do back arm on the sink. Also, they wa blow up, uh, put water in garbage bags and put that in pillowcases yeah. and then use that, huh? Yeah. N now, besides improvised workout elements, these black lads that I'm talking about, as I've said before, they also got improvised sex toys. They got something called Fifi. I don't know if you got something like that here. What they do is they take a rubber glove and they put some lubrication in it and they wrap it in the towel and they bang that, right? But the but the younger guys get more creative with it and they'll be arguing, man, you don't know how to make no Fifi, man. I seen one guy, I tried to go back in the room at night. He he got the whole mattress wrapped up and he got the Fifi, he working the Fifi there. So, hey, they got improvised sex toys that we got improvised food. Maybe you tell me something that's special about what you see in, in the Cardiff jail. Go back five, six years ago when they banned smoking, totally, yeah? Everyone was smoking nicotine patches, yeah? So, <laughs> yeah. Sounds brutal. <laughs> sounds pretty gross. Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically what they would do is they'd come in, yeah, right? And they'd say to the doctor, look, I want to go, I'm a smoker. I want to go on the nicotine course because I'm, I'm coming off. And they'd give you a course for like six weeks. It would be like three weeks of like the, the strongest. And then they'd lean you down in mills. What they do, yeah, you get the you get the nicotine patch, you slap it on a kettle, yeah? You boil the kettle, you peel the plastic shit which they don't want, leaves you with the pure nicotine goo. Then when that dries off, they cut them in slips, yeah? In strips with a razor. Mm -hmm. You use tea bag. Now you don't want a prison issue tea bag where they give you a knife. That don't smoke. You need to get a PG tip. That really puffs the gold, you know? PG tip, a nicotine patch, and a newspaper from the Inside Times. Everyone was loving them. What else they got? They got some ganja in there? Oh, you can get anything in there. Yeah, you can get weed, acid, crack, heroin. I've seen people take acid, but why the fuck would you want to take acid in jail? I don't get it. I'll be climbing the walls. I just want to take something that forgets, forgets the walls, takes them down, just mellows me out. People who smoke crack, people who sniff coke, people who take pills and acid on Christmas day are fucking nuts in my eyes. I'm guessing you're an acid head. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever uh, taken acid in jail? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And, and the thing is, but it is, you know, jail is like life. 
it, it's like football. It could be it's like it. sex. It could be it could be really good or really bad, right? Let's say. So, right, jail is seldom going to be really good. But there are times where you meet good friends, and when it's not violent, let's say, and you're up all night talking, getting to know somebody. They, it, so if it's a two-man room, I took the acid with a cellmate, and he he didn't take it, but he was cool, and we used to have a lot of conversations, and we got along well. So in that situation, when lights went out. So we're gonna be in the same cell, so it was something to do. It was something to do, but generally speaking, yeah, if you're miserable and you're having a bad time, but if you're already sentenced and you're not- Yeah, I get it, I get it. it, it you know, set and setting. Timothy Leary is, was the proponent of LSD in the United States along with Richard Alpert, thereafter known as Baba Ram Das, and he taught about set and setting. My parents were acid heads and I had all the information and I was raised around that culture and the yeah. music as well. And that come from the UK heavy blues and Black Sabbath and everything. But uh, he, Timothy Leary talked about set and setting. The environment you're in and the mentality you go into the trip with. But I agree, yeah. there's not too many times that uh, you're gonna wanna drop hits of acid when you're in jail situation. If you uh, use your own Fifi? No, I never use Fifi's brother. I don't get so exotic What's with that? it. What's that, just pam five friends? Yeah, five, I do it six times a week and take one day off for, for God on Sunday. Let's take a walk around the jail. The smoking ban came into Wales before England. It was as if they wanted like to test it on the mugs basically, thinking we're the idiots who will try it first. As you can see, these walls are quite high. I know of one person who tried to escape from this prison. I'm not going to say his name. He's still alive, but <laughs> I guess no knows. Normally these prisons, yeah, because it's in the city, it's not in the middle of nowhere like some of your state penitentiaries might yeah. be. But they, got, they, they normally got ankle breakers on the sides. When I was in Stoke Heath, they had ankle breakers. Uh. They haven't got him here for some reason, but the girls come out in the night, they bring their tits out. If you ever get their tits out, yeah, the I, I was just about to say because Fort Lauderdale County Jail, we'll be up in there and the girls yes, will do that yes. with us. <laughs> That's F wing, this is an old wing. So I've actually lived in that cell there as a cleaner, and three doors in, I lived in that cell as well. F28. What, what, what's the food like? Garbage, bro. Garbage. Do you guys eat fry ups? <sighs> no, we're not, we're not that privileged. You get on no, a certain. I mean, do, do Welsh eat a. Uh, uh, what, English English breakfast? Breakfast? Yeah, a yeah, yeah. You've got a Welsh breakfast, even better, man. Oh, yeah? Welsh sausages. I'm gonna have it tomorrow. Hundred percent, bro. We get shit jail. What do you reckon, Cass, on a food in jail? It's all right. Depends how long you've been in. You soon get used to it. <laughs> you get it. used to it, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like of course. Fry up on a Saturday morning, hash brown, boiled egg. You know, like, like we. This is it's a standard procedure. You know, the noodles. You make your, your different curries in the kettles and stuff. You yeah. know, all if right. you get chickens, you know, sort of on the serve, you get extra chickens. If not, you and your pad mate will use your chicken for the curry. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And it's just a little leg like that. Boy, so listen, hey. So we're here in Cardiff, and that's the magistrate, and Roddy Murr are the oppressed. Oi Ben Cardiff, they got a song. Magistrate! Magistrate! You're the cunt! We all hate Magistrate! Yeah, so I'm glad to dedicate it to them for all the all the so cool boys who's been nicked unfairly in there. Right? Now as far as Wolverhampton, that Mike Hunt Jabroni, whatever his real name is, I don't care. Because it's not only him. Because he's a real person, isn't it? Yeah, but, and but, I, but, it's, but here's the thing, it's not only him, it's not one guy. It's been other wolves that I've had issues with and, and try, want to give me a hard time and this and that. And you know what it is? They're just jealous. They're, because what it is, is he want to he wanna go in on every time I put a smaller firm, he want to say something slick about them. Yep. But if it's a bigger firm, he don't say nothing. So Wolverhampton, I, I respect them, I respect wolves. The MEM army, come from the uh, subway army. I know what happened with them. But uh, the fact of the matter is, is they're not at the very top and they're not at the very bottom. Would you, if one of them called you out to go for a one-on-one -on -one or a punch-up, would you do it? Listen, mate, the first time I come here, I felt like I had something to prove. Yeah. And I had to receive so much abuse and everything. Once, and people say they want to fight me and this and that, and I come with that mentality. Now, once I come here, and none of those people actually wanted to fight, and, it, and you know, it's not... You got a lot of lads out, it's not that they're soft. It's that maybe they don't, you know, they, they, they come to have a different opinion on me. But either way, I come this time, and like, like I've learned from the football lads, if it happens, it happens. As far as me going around setting up fights and this and that, if it's gonna be for money in a ring, and it makes sense with, you know, with whatever. But, uh, you know, we have it at the football as it goes naturally. And besides that, it is a lot of banter and this and that. I don't got nobody, I don't got really a problem with nobody who directly don't got a problem with me. If they want to, they can attack me. Have you I ever got, had some altercation that you would call a day at the football? Uh, no. Yeah, so this is, 
the Motor Point Arena, yeah? This is where the majority of the worldwide known bands Whoa, are. whoa, 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 whoa! You know who's Misfits, brother? Punk yeah, band yeah, yeah. America? Well, guess Stop. what? Hey, I'm calling you out once again, Glenn Danzig, you short shit! Hey, you ha you sort of half pint. Now what I'm telling you again, Danzig, is we come here to Cardiff and I'll challenge you in front of the Cardiff people and I'll show why I'm the greatest singer for Misfits and not you. And then we can send you maybe to Thailand or somewhere else like that. And then I'll run the Misfits from here and I'll give you a little sample. Too much horror business, driving late at night. Psycho 78, 12 o'clock, don't be late. You see, Danzig, you ain't gotta like me no more. Come here, I'll challenge you Cardiff anytime. Yeah, so obviously we've spoken about Cardiff, we spoke about Swansea on the podcast as well. Is there any other Welsh firms you've heard of? Well, it so happens, since we're in Wales, I got a score to settle with somebody that your blown is named Ryan Reynolds. And he used to be Ryan. stealing my material. And I know about the Wrexham Frontline. Hey, and we all know, they're not a top firm in the level of Carter Soul Crew, it's true. But I still know who they are. But Wrexham Frontline, you're making a big mistake having that silly son of a gun Ryan Reynolds with you brother and I heard he might be around here and if from where I saw the videos in that pub where they were showing the women of Wrexham I don't blame him for not wanting to hang around there I think I'd rather be in the car if I was him too but guess what Ryan Reynolds looks like I'm American that's welcome here and you're not champ so if I see you we're gonna have to see how it goes Seems we've been talking about Soul Crew a lot. Um, obviously, I've done a podcast with Jonathan Evans. He's one of the top boys. He's been around from the 80s, 90s, and he wants to meet. He wants to meet a Yank. So, uh, you up for it? Yeah. Carter Soul Crew. Everybody knows that Carter Soul Crew is one of the top firms in UK history, and also everybody I know acknowledges that it's a top in this entire region of Southwest and everything. So, that being said. Everybody knows I knock around with Plymouth, I, you know, but I got maximum respect for Soul Crew. I'm honored to be here. So if any of those brothers will, will be gracious enough to meet me, I'll, I'll be honored. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Feed me till I want no more. <laughs> Do you have any lyrics, bro? Of course. Can you give us a little uh, uh. In an age of division, I'm a world of my own. Born of the iron fire, blood and brimstone. Like a skull across bones, I'm a fear that I can't. Many sagas, many bars, mighty king of Babylon. Roll like Tron, double D, itchy bar. From Voltron, when I grab a microphone, on and on. Kubla Khan, Tiger Tron, laughing hyena, great pyramid of Giza. Uh, in the Cardiff, woo! Jeez. Only know how we do. Having a good time with these boys. Cheers for having me over. Have you ever seen on Vice the documentary of the American football hooligan? Yeah. And that's him. How are you? Yeah. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. What's your name? Brad Royston, man. It's a good man, Yo. good lads out here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so cool. so cool. yeah. Yeah. No, hey, respect the soul. I love you, man. Yeah, yeah. and you, of course, hey, Look out for this one. Yeah, I look out for this Yo, one. Yo, give me a little shot on the center. Stay, stay central. Yo, stay central. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, guys. Hey, bro. Hey, hey Tim. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> So where's your firm there, mate? We're, we're in New York. Come on. <laughs> How are you doing, all right? John. Nice to meet you. Nice to Pleasure. meet you. All right, guys? Honor. You good? Yeah. Yeah, you good? Yeah, we thought we'd... we'd Having a little you. tour of you. Having good. a little tour of the man. This is yeah? This is Jonathan Evans, yeah. Pleasure to meet you, brother. Pleasure to meet you. Any questions you've got for this man, he knows his shit. He's been round the block. What, uh, what pub do you recommend him, eh? Where would you used to drink back in the day? The Owen. Um, the Burra. You had um, Brownells is gone, obviously, but so I have a bevy. I, I, I take him in the Owen. I have a bevy in the Owen. He said, if you do the video, I'll buy you a hundred pints if you come to England. I says, mate, you. I <laughs> said, I'll, said yeah? I'll, I said, I'll do the video if he's in the hospital and it's your friend and he's a respected lad like that. I'll just do the video for you. You yeah. don't gotta buy me anything. But so if you're gonna tell. give me a hundred pints, can I stay for you for a little while? <laughs> he says, yeah. I said, then what am I doing here? I bought a one-way ticket. I bought a one-way ticket and moved. I lived in mainly in Plymouth for six months. I've heard about Soul Crew for a very long time, as I was telling him. Even though Roddy Moreno and the Oppress, he, he's not in Soul Crew. I've been listening to Oi music. I'm 48 since eight, 1986, 87, yeah, when yeah. I was a kid. So a lot, as I mentioned in the podcast, as, alongside bands like Cockney Rejects, Last Resort, Foreskins, and so forth, I, you know, he says, this was for the Cardiff crew. He says it at the beginning of the song. <laughs> so since I'm a kid, I've been hearing the name and little by little, you know, I heard all about Soul Cruise in 2017. 
you know, I started really getting deeper in the, in the casual thing and studying it further. And I bought the book by Nick Thornton, Casual's book. So from that point, one, before I was halfway through it, I was claiming Miami Casuals, and that's <laughs> that led to the whole internet thing. It's a different culture over in America, though, isn't it? Yeah, and the, and the fashion, and the brands, and the banter, and everything that goes along with this lad culture, it's something special. That's, that's, that's what it's about now, you know. Um, respect, really. I, I think Cardiff have um, earned their respect, and we respect the, you know, a, a, a lot of other firms as well. And so a lot of the ideas I had, I don't really take them that serious anymore, but if other people have taken them seriously, they, I was talking about taking the force fighting model from, yeah, from Europe, it. but yeah, doing yeah. it in a different way, in a in a professional environment, and wearing clobber and simulating the street, putting black mats and painting them like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see with graffiti what you mean. in the back. So yeah. I had, I have a. What about getting a small stadium and a and a and a team, uh, like a pub team, and we really have it in the stadium live. You know, I want to do more with it culturally. Lads like you should be able to earn a living off your exploits. And the culture, whether it's a clobber brand, whether it's writing books, making films, you know, a lot of the material's been over exhausted. Yeah, it has, it has. A lot, a lot of it, you know, there's a lot of books out there, there's a lot of clobber out there, there's, you know, the forest aspect you were just on about then, it's, it's more of the East European thing, yeah. isn't it? I don't think. Um, Okay, well, it can't know. be done here because these guys, Millwall and Brentford, tried it. They did and they try, got yeah, yeah, yeah. They did I, try, I thought they yeah. did that in response to me. Yeah. So the thing is, they got themselves nicked. Yeah. So I gave up on a lot of those ideas because the bill's not going to tolerate it. No. The way they, no. any sort of activity. Violent assault, the yeah. fray, you know, yeah. If, to be honest, you know what? If, 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 I think if you've done that in this country, you're going to end up having four years. As soon as, soon as someone films it and it goes on YouTube, whatever, the police will just watch it, wrap them all up, nip you for an fray and violent disorder and you sat in jail then for four years thinking oh, wow what are you that for you see what i mean you know the youngsters might get away with it but um guys my age you know i think they've um they've run their course don't get me wrong we're still it's still in us it's still you know it'll never it'll never leave if it's in you it's in you like i said before like you know it'll never leave you you know you'll always um have that little devil on, the, on your shoulder. It was the first time, I just got, came out, just got done with probation, and it was the first time, it was maybe 10 years ago, the first time I stood back and didn't do anything. You thought, wow, what's, yeah. And it, fe yeah. it felt bad, it felt bad, because then afterwards they tell you, you saw what I did, I don't know, you saw it. So, but with that being said, with this thing, it's more like what I've learned from the lads, you know, if it kicks off, it kicks off, you don't necessarily gotta go looking for it. Uh, a, a match day game, preferably home, because um, then you, you, you go to a pub and meet all the boys, you see what I mean? Then it's, it's, it, it still is a buzz, don't get me wrong. Go and see your mates chatting, remember this, remember that, you see what I mean? Having a little caper, having a, uh, you know, having a bevy and all that. It's, it's, the, the culture's still there, but the culture's not, not, not any aspect of, like I said, running up and down the streets, you know, um, getting yourself, putting yourself on offer. A legit small stadium with teams playing, and you're gonna come in the coach and there's the home firm all filmed and all made for an entertainment product and a real reality TV it's just, These were the ideas <laughs> yeah. I had in the, Instead of Love Island, Fight Islands Something like that <laughs> Well, we got in America again, they do work out Yeah, it's, so there's a lot of possibilities and the thing is I, I, I started coming into the culture hard with the, with the casuals in 2018 But there's, it, the device misrepresented it in the sense that I told them I'm, wasn't the, I'm not the first one There's lads all over the country that have been in yeah, too longer yeah, than me yeah. But with that being said the culture is growing, and what I'm doing, and talking about the firms and so forth, other American lads, other skinheads, other gang members. Are they into it? Are they into it? Like, is there other American things into it? Yeah. It's spreading, and, yeah. What I, and what I've done, and then me being embraced by British lads, yeah. you know, that also has done a lot to make my friends and everybody else in America more curious, and they hear what I'm talking about, and they hear the names. It's very foreign. It, this is an exotic culture to us. I think that British people don't realize it. There's a a lot more to be tell, told of this tale. What do you reckon is the best Welsh beer? I had the um, prison sentence because of this pub. I can remember Bradford come here once before, Bradford City. About 50 of them have come. No, there weren't, there weren't many of the boys in here that day. They've come in, Bradford, gone off a little bit, nothing major. Then we've caught them then towards the grounds. I had a little offer them in there. I had another offer them there. But we were so vexed that they'd come here and we'd missed them. We had them on the last game of the season and um, we took 110 of us up, two coaches, full of lads, all half crew. Went to Halifax, had it all planned lovely. 
two coaches into Halifax, which is 10, 11 miles from Bradford, packed the coaches up, went across on a train from Halifax to Bradford, landed straight into their city centre, no mobile, nothing. Had, had a little scuffle with them, chased them into this pub. Then, you know, what have happened? Some guy had come out and fired the flare at us, yeah? So we've chased, the, chased them back into the pub, got wrapped up by the old bill, but after the game, um, fair news, well, we had, we had a, a really good battle with Bradford, really good battle with them. But we were so vexed that they come here, we thought, okay, then we'll, we'll yeah, well, we, we you, owe you, you one. You put it, I see you put a bit of you extra know. organizing yeah. to do it the right way. We, we, made, we yeah. made sure we paid, we, you know, we, we thought, okay. And, uh, They're called yeah. the ointment, yeah? Ointment. Third dude, it was, it, I, got, I got to give you credit, it was toe to toe, you know, no one backed off. They were pretty good fun? Yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a really good battle. I tell you what, it was a very good fight we had in uh, the city centre ones with Barnsley. Barnsley 5-0. Yeah, they come down, they were game. Well spear, my well first spear. time trying. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm, delicious, I drink this in honor of the soul crew. Nice. Have you ever seen anything from Torquay? Torquay. Um, sticks of rock, they're lovely. <laughs> nice hotels. Um, Have you heard of a TNT firm? That's newer. And some people, I don't know. Some no, no. Yeah, TNT, Torquay Nasty Turnout. They have a good name. What, what are they called? Torquay Nasty Turnout. TNT. TNT. It's newer. No, and, uh, no. The youngsters, are they? Um, I, I don't know. Because I know older lad, 20, and he was with the Torquay youth, and he's older than these guys. Okay. Now they're more, they're, they're a bit younger, they're not youth as such. But uh, some people tell me they don't exist. To so. be honest, they're not going to lie, I've never... you never heard of that? No. So, um, what, do you, what do you make about the representations in, in the films, the original firm, in the second firm? What, with with West Ham and Pompey and... And um, trying to put, what do you make of the representation? To me, they made the, the West Ham look like Muppets. Like, especially in the original Gary Oldman one. The Pompey, yeah, Pompey, yeah, Pompey came out looking yeah. hard. Yeah, I yeah. Think, you know, and I, I guess he's done that because, it, the, I don't know who wrote the original movie, but uh, Nick Love, the second firm, he's made a wall. Yeah. But uh, they kind of take the piss out of the West Ham. What do you say about those representations? Yeah, they did, they did. You know, they're, they're, them films, you've got, you've got to take with a pinch of salt avenue. Well, you know that, I mean? that's what I kind you of know? learned it. I had to understand that people had to tell me, listen mate, don't believe everything you see in no, movies. No, no, no. But I, I, that's no. What, it was a starting point for me. Because yeah. I was watching these films yeah. in America and not much people know about it, to be honest with you. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah, yeah. Anytime we played that law, we go to Blackpool after the game, yeah? And you're guaranteed, guaranteed to meet another mob in Blackpool and have, and have a scrap. You know, from Pompey before Newcastle. Bristol, Newport, um, bloody hell. I'm going to have to get off because I'm going to pick up my kids. Pleasure to meet you, my friend. It's been my honour, brother. Hopefully, we'll have a uh, bit more time next time. And um, if you're over again, we'll take you to a game, meet the rest of the boys, and have a good drink. And a little honour. Thank you. Paper, yeah? Pleasure nice to meet you. To meet you. Respect. Nice Cardiff, to meet you. respect. It's all cool. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Take care, mate. Take care, guys. Right. Yeah? Do you know what's funny? We filmed all day today and uh, we're, we're here now in a fitting place. We spoke about the Prince of Wales and I'm saying about the last Prince, the real Prince of Wales, was the Owen Glyndor. We are in the Owen Glyndor pub. This is his pub. Wow. This is where we finish our night. This is where we finish our journey. Um, How has it been for you? Amazing and uh, a fitting end is to drink the Welsh beer. And, I, and I've been seeing this name around here. I don't know Tiny if you know Rebel. this guy's Tiny Rebel. Shout out to Tiny Rebel. Boy, big shout out because I never had this particular. I never this that man there, the barman. He said it's his favorite. So uh, cheers to all Welsh people. Cheers, to, it's, it's so cool. Cheers to Cardiff City FC. Kesto also, Amanda Cullen. I've had a lovely time. As you see, I stayed all night. I'm gonna stay overnight. And uh, massive respect. And thanks for having me over. And I'll come back. We'll do another. We'll do a part two. And then I want to go. I want to go. Yeah, Sw first Swansea home, as Elvo just told me. He invited me, so I'm coming. Cheers, respect. Stay safe. Diablo, Del Boy D. Diablo TV, like and subscribe. Do things you're supposed to do. Ah, uh, Central Club. Stay Central. The Central Club.